Oh, nice, and nice and quiet. Nice and quiet. All right. Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about what to expect on a psych nursing unit. We're going to talk about what a daily med pass looks like. And then we're also going to talk about what are some questions we might ask our patients throughout the day on a daily basis. And I want to give a shout out to one of our viewers by the name of Just Me. This viewer asked, can you do a video on questions to ask during daily assessments, what to expect in the beginning of working in an inpatient setting, and what medication dispensing looks like? I'm looking to start an assignment for inpatient for the first time and am extremely nervous. Well, <laughs> before we get on to answering your questions, Just Me, I wanna say that it is completely normal for you to feel very nervous starting on an inpatient unit. I remember when I first started on an inpatient unit, I did not sit down for the entire first week. So other staff was sitting down, I came out on the floor and people were like, hey, here's a seat right here, feel free to sit down. I was like, no, I'm good. It's like, you know, I was doing my wellness checks up and down the hall and they always say to keep your back to the wall, you know, when patients are around, I'm like sliding down. It wasn't that bad, right? I didn't like keep my back to the wall all the time, but I felt pretty nervous. And I would say that during probably the first few weeks, I felt kind of hyper vigilant because I was so nervous. I mean, you come onto a floor, you see you have lots of patients who are pacing, you've got patients who are drooling a lot, you've got patients with flat affects, you've got all this behavior that for me, in my experience, I had never experienced before. And it was totally outside the normal realm of human behavior. And so I think that's why I felt nervous, but eventually like all things, you acclimate to it. Now I can walk onto any psych floor and and none of it bothers me. And my hunch is that you will have that kind of same experience. So let's move on to what to expect on an inpatient setting. And I've got some notes here we're gonna go through so that I don't forget too much. But when you first walk onto the unit, you should receive report on all the patients. And I would say that generally these are the things you'll wanna see in your report. When was the patient's last bowel movement? How was the patient's behavior during the previous shift? Does the patient have labs or appointments for the day? Uh, how about any dietary or special dietary needs for the patient? And then is the patient on any sort of precaution? So for instance, the three precautions that I can think of that just come up off the top of my head would be at the hospitals I've worked at, we've had assault precautions, suicide precautions, and elopement precautions. So you, you want to know if they're on any one of those precautions, because essentially what that does is that reduces the amount of privilege that the patient has on the unit. And I'm not going to go through each one of those precautions in details because I think it's sort of beyond the scope of this video, but these are just things you'd want to know in your report. And then how about is the patient on any sort of behavioral plan, any sort of special behavioral plan? So for instance, you might come on a unit, this this patient might be on a behavioral plan, which means that if patient starts to display this kind of behavior, then staff staff's response is X, Y, and Z. That's kind of what a behavioral plan is. It sort of sets out the expectations for staff regarding how to address certain behaviors for that particular patient. And then I would say the last thing I'd want to know on report is what works well for some of the difficult patients, what seems to help them throughout the day. All right, so then you'll come onto the unit, you'll receive report, and then generally you might do some sort of what I would call safety and environmental checks. You're going to walk around the entire unit. You might check to make sure locks are functioning right. So you put your key in, make sure the lock turns, right? Last thing you want, I know it sounds weird, is that some emergency goes down and a lock doesn't work. Trust me. You'll also check doors to make sure that security doors are locked, stuff like that. Maybe you might check certain patients' room for contraband, check the outside yard for any contraband, things of that nature. Then you'll also have med passes throughout the day. If you're doing the day shift, it's not common to have maybe three med passes, like one in the morning, one at noon, and one during p.m., then you'll also be doing wellness checks where someone walks around and you're checking on patients maybe every five to 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the uh, patient status. Then you'll also, it's pretty common to do vital signs throughout the day. And then generally speaking, I mean, psych is very easy. I know I'm listing a lot of stuff here, so it sounds like I'm gonna be super busy. You're probably not gonna be that busy unless maybe you're on, uh, on an admission unit. But generally speaking, I mean, psych is, 
it's, it's pretty easy. I think for you, you might have to get used to adjusting to just doing nothing. And by nothing, I mean pretty much just monitoring patients and interacting with patients. I mean, you just sit there and sometimes you're just chilling. And then you'll, do, you'll help patients with showers, laundry, doing their laundry, ADLs, things of that nature. And then lastly, I guess you kind of have labs, appointments, and groups throughout the day, especially during the daytime. There tends to be more groups and activities for patients. So I hope that kind of fills you in on just generally sort of what a day can look like. And then I would say if I had to describe the common area that patients are in, also known as the day hall or milieu, you have a number of patients who are going to be free, uh, pacing. And I, I believe that's most mostly do not because they are because they have schizophrenia but because of their medications and they're feeling very restless and the way that they relieve their restlessness is by frequent pacing and then you'll have a number of patients who just will spend almost the entire day in their room isolating sometimes it's because of their mental condition a lot of times i believe it's because of the sedatory or the sedative power of the medication and they just want to sleep a lot and then you'll have patients who are just up and active. And um, I think that pretty much covers it for just general patient behavior. All right. So how about MedPass? Like what does MedPass look like? And okay, I, I guess I'll just say this. On some, on some units I've been on, the patients will come up to a med window. And they'll line up and then you'll do meds that way. On other units, it's a combination of you go out and you deliver medication to patients inside their room or in the day hall, wherever they're at. My personal preference is to deliver medication to them because then you get to kind of see them more in their natural setting. It gives you another excuse to see them. However, on some, on some units I was on, it was forbidden to do that. So if you're brand, if you're brand new to med passing, which it sounds like you are, I would suggest you pre-pull your medication. So your medication will come in a little drawer and inside that drawer, there'll be little sandwich baggies that have the patient's name on it, the medication, the dose when they take it. So I would suggest you pull the medication out and put it in one of those little pill cups. And then as you're pulling it out, make sure you know what the indication is for or what the patient is taking that medication for. Not only because the patient may ask you, but it's just good practice. So when I was brand new, that's what I did on all my meds. I'm like, okay, I don't know what this medication is. I would Google it. All right. Zyprexa, for psychosis. This is Haldol. Okay. For psychosis. This is Lamotrigine. Okay. It's a mood stabilizer. That's what I would do. And I put the little pills inside the cup. Then I would scan everything. You know, you ask the patient their name and date of birth, scan everything, verify what you're scanning is actually what's popping up on the computer or verify what you're pulling out of that little pill cup is what's against the paper mar if you guys are doing paper mars. And then the most difficult thing for me for MedPass was freaking finding out how to get some of these pills out of the packaging because you'll get patients who want you to do their meds quickly, who are kind of pressuring you and you just get some bizarre interactions at the med window and you want to be efficient. I'm not saying you want to rush, but you want to be efficient with that. So that was the hardest thing. Like ibuprofen, for instance, out of all the medication you would think that would be in very secure packaging, ibuprofen is one of the most difficult medications to get out of its pill packaging. I mean, it's very frustrating. But once you get that down, like right, like some, it's better to pull off the paper and then push the med through. Some, it's better to just push the med through. Then you've got some liquid, like liquid Depico, for instance. It's this pink, viscous liquid that's just like syrup. It's real sticky. You don't want to get it on your hands. And that can be kind of obnoxious to work with, especially if you spill it. So it's really just a matter of kind of getting used to passing medications. So that'll just come with time. Some patients will be on what's called crush and float medication because when they take their oral tabs, they have a tendency to cheek them or pretend like they cheek them or hide them in their hand or spin them in the trash can, whatever. So you have these ODT tablets or orally disintegrating tablets that'll just go under their tongue and dissolve. Then you'll have some patients who are on observation. So after they take their meds, they have to be out in the day hall and staff have to watch them to make sure they're not cheeking their meds or spitting them or spitting them out or whatever. And then you have some injections. Most of your injections are going to be insulin and then potentially you might give some long acting injections of antipsychotic medications on an inpatient unit LAIs are are pretty 
infrequent, but you might have them like Thorazine or Invega or Abilify you potentially could do. And they're actually generally very easy injections for the most part. You just draw it up and then do deltoid or the glutes. And then finger sticks, you'll do quite a number of finger sticks for glucose monitoring. That's very common, especially because lots of the medications, Zyprexa, these antipsychotics mess with the metabolism, they mess with the glucose of patients, they mess with all that stuff. And so diabetes is, is very prevalent among those taking, um, among people taking antipsychotic medication. And of course, you'll have lots and lots of Miralax. So almost every patient in the morning that comes up will have Miralax. So you're going to get very good at pouring and mixing Miralax. It's very easy. And Metamucil and Colace. Yeah, those are all big ones for constipation. All right, so I think generally speaking, hopefully that helps you for kind of what a med pass looks like. If you got more questions, feel free to holler. I'm just kind of going off of my list here. And then you also asked what questions... What are some common questions that we might ask daily for patients for assessment? So I guess common daily assessments would be vital signs. That's very common because the meds mess with all sorts of uh, vital signs on patients, messes with their heart rate, messes with their blood pressure a lot. And then you also might do metabolic monitoring. So just weight. So pretty much if you're doing these assessments, it's because it's to safeguard against side effects, right? Or to prevent side effects or to at least know, hey, this is where the patient is going as far as these side effects go. So metabolic monitoring, weight gain is a huge one with antipsychotics. So it's very common for patients to be on on weight assessment. You just take their weight, right? Have them step on a scale once a month. And then you'll also measure their, their, their abdomen for truncal obesity. So you take a little measurement, thing, measurement tape and go around their belly button to see if they're gaining weight that way. And then sometimes you'll review their labs to kind of look at their lipids, triglycerides, and see if there's a trend, an upward trend over time for their lab work because all the antipsychotics mess with their metabolism. And then bowel movements. Every day you'll ask patients, when, when was your last bowel movement? And we're, we're trying to make sure that, they, that three, three days has not lapsed since their last bowel movement. If I would say if a patient has a, hasn't had a a bowel movement in 48 hours, I am pumping prune juice. You just have them take a bunch of prune juice and that fixes it. And then if you need to, you can add some more Miralax Colace, but prune juice is amazing. And then another, your other daily assessment is, is if a patient is on any sort of precautions, like assault precautions, suicide precaution, then you're going to ask specific questions to those precautions. So for instance, if they're on suicide precaution, obviously you would ask a question, Hey, maybe when's the last time you felt like hurting yourself? Or have you had any thoughts today about hurting yourself. Hopefully that makes sense. So as far as a list, I've just made a list of common questions that I might ask patients throughout the day. And there, of course, there's like a, a lot more questions you could ask, but these ones are far, are probably fairly common. So when was your last bowel movement? Do you have any pain? When was the last time you took a shower? When was the last time you changed your clothes? I know some of these are like, you're going to ask, but it's like, yeah, I mean, a lot of these patients are either so sedated or they're so deep in their schizophrenia, they forget to do a lot of these things. When was the last time you clipped your nails? What are your voices telling you today? How do you feel about yourself? Do you feel like hurting yourself or others? Those are very common questions. All right, so I think that wraps it up, just me. I hope you feel a little more comfortable I hope this video has made you feel a little more comfortable and you're going to feel nervous. That's just the bottom line. You're going to feel nervous and it'll probably take you, my guess is three months before you feel very acclimated to your unit. So give us some time, but I think you're going to do well. Psych nursing is actually very easy. You just got to get acclimated to it. So thanks for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you will, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.